Well, Steph Curry got out to that great start, uh, 21 points in the first quarter, but scored zero in the second, just four points in the fourth quarter. How did the Celtics adjust to defending Steph Curry, but also not getting burned by the other Warriors? Well, in the first half, I'm not sure what it was, but the Boston Celtics really weren't playing Steph Curry the way they're supposed to. Daniel Tice is way too low. Steph Curry's the best shooter on the planet, maybe ever. When he comes off a screen, he has to see bodies. This time, the Boston Celtics flat out forget Steph Curry's even playing. Everybody drops back. They leave Steph Curry wide open from three. Those are mistakes. In the second half, they correct it. Look where Robert Williams is. He sees the screen being set. He's up at the three-point line. Then he's up again. Steph tries to rock him back. Uh-uh. Time Lord with the block, now we're off to the races. This time Steph Curry comes off, Al Horford's up, and you look what they're doing schematically. They're not playing Draymond Green. They're gonna let him have any shot he wants to, ends up in a very tough shot. That's gonna be something that the Warriors are gonna have to look at because when Dre sets a screen, he doesn't roll to the basket. Or if he's even on the court and doesn't have the ball, they are not going to guard him. Whether he's at the top of the key, whether he's in the strong corner, the weak side corner, Draymond Green is somebody that they have decided we're going to help off of and we're going to show Steph Curry some extra attention based on where Draymond Green is on the court. Steve Curry's going to have to have a remedy for that. That puts, means put Dre in the screen and roll and let him get downhill or go with a small lineup and let Dre play along the baseline where he, that's more of his scoring area because they're going to let him have all the threes he 